uh, yeah, hello, this is Luke Banton, so, um, this is somewhat a plug, but, uh, uh, and it's a plug of, as well as uh, just a brief uh, look at, um, what I think is going on with atheism at the moment and how, uh, there's a lot of, of, of real humane sort of, um, uh, stand back attitudes from who I would call the, the negative atheist that I've identified as a negative atheist since since 16, 17 years of age but um, they are people who if you buy books like um, Atheism, The Case Against God by George Smith or uh, Atheism, A Philosophical Justification by Michael Martin they uh, they tend to portray and discuss atheism in the context of two kinds one is just uh, negative atheism which is not a religion it's a uh, there are sayings about it like um, atheism is a religion like abstinence is a sex position or atheism is a religion like off is a TV station um, it's just it, they're non -com they're non comparable because there's there's nothing to believe in um, it's not it's not nihilism either where they're saying you know like old original nihilism where it's like nothing fucking matters uh, it's not it's not that at all um, it is just about abstaining from supernatural God belief. Um, uh, so in George Smith's book, he he does mention you know the three monotheisms: Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. But he tends to focus on Christianity and the atheists' response to Christianity. Um, so in a debate, an what a negative atheist will do is that they will. Um, they will listen to and comprehend all the arguments put forward for why God exists or why Christianity is true or uh, whatever re whatever religion the theists are arguing for in that case and they will deconstruct, rebut um, and disprove their arguments so all the negative atheist does is sort of says you know I'm, um, I'm here if you, have a, if you have a case that your religion is true um, I'm even possibly willing to convert to it, but you just haven't made a case, uh, a good enough case that your religion is true. Um, so, atheism, as it's, in its broadest sense, doesn't doesn't mean you're running around saying there is no God, and you're all like, you know, you're egging houses, going, "There's no fucking God." It's uh, it's much more chilled. It's um. It's like, um, it's like high school weed. Uh, it's the high school weed of, you know, we're just chilling back here. If they can prove it, we'll believe. If they can't prove it, don't worry. Um, and so, I just smoke weed. I uh, haven't for years, but when I first started, I found it to be quite relaxing. But, um, so then there's positive atheism. And positive atheism is um, a little more assertive. Uh, it's not a um, it's not a preaching thing, but it's um, positive. A to be a positive atheist is to say that you understand the arguments that you could make to demonstrate logically that no gods exist. Uh, you know, to sum up most of the different religions going around, there is about a thousand gods anyway. So like. If you were in a religion like Christianity with one one God, the Heavenly Father, um, then you would be an atheist still regarding all the 999 other gods you don't believe in. And that's why there's that popular expression, atheism, we go one God further. But, um, yeah, positive, positive atheists will look into arguments like... Um, uh, the arguments from divine attributes and incoherence, which look into how God's all, uh, infinite knowledge and infinite love and infinite power are all ir irreconcilable and logically absurd attributes that, that a God couldn't have all those attributes at once, and or if they did, they wouldn't be evil and suffering, and you know those sorts. Uh, that's just a, a very brief. Yeah, once again, yeah, the George, the Michael Martin book, uh, Atheism: A Philosophical Justification, even goes into arguments 
for uh, arguments disproving theism and arguments against God's existence are uh, expressed in in form like mathematical equations and algebra and stuff. But um, yeah, some of uh, I'm reaching a point now where because I was just a bit of a nice guy who didn't. Um, I would I would contest points of view on forums, and if I was invited invited to a discussion, uh, I would express my point of view. But um, I was challenged by someone at a, a club I used to DJ at called Platform Three, and she had said to me, she was this pretty business girl, and she'd said that um, assertiveness. She had basically had she had this DNM with me on the couch and encouraged me to be more assertive. So. Um, I'll never forget that conversation. She was a very pretty girl. And, um... Yeah, but, um... So, that's part of what's led me at this point now, amongst other factors, to think about pos the positive atheist stance and, and, um... Particularly with some of the experiences I've had where I got railroaded with a bunch of stupid uh, assumptions about my mentality because essentially because the people who were sizing me up um, you know they had been for years they had been my employers for years and they were I wound up confirming that they were religious believers of some kind uh, one a Freemason and the other one either a Freemason as well or some sort of Christian some sort of you know holy monarch holy monarch what do we do about Rolf Harris like that kind of, you know, I'm sure we could put him on a tablet. Um, and I just think, you know, I probably wouldn't have lost my standing with that job if I had just said to them at the start, like, when you check someone, you check them with a, uh, from your point of view, there's a parameter of a language, like a linguistic uh, framework that you perceive with and, and look through and like, Books on epistemology will uh, help you to um, broaden your horizons on, on that sort of thing because like um, I now see this happening quite a bit and it can be quite uh, damaging to people's lives, you know. Um, uh, if it, uh, A religious person who's like, you know, buying and selling fuckloads of pharmaceuticals going, oh, seeing is believing, you know. Sh Shake the drug rep's hand. Seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. Run checks on Luke. Oh, Luke's watching uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, oh no, what's what's he going to do? What if he takes drugs and dresses up like Freddy Krueger and, and, and actually puts, you know, blades on his hand? Uh, like, the sort of uh, reserved... Um, I understood I don't dress the same as everyone, but, um, yeah, just the, the types of, qu it, but, but religious belief can convolute, um, a tolerance for diversity and appreciation of diversity within the context of functioning human rights, um, and that's why I think there are terms like religious discrimination, but what is getting, what has pissed me off, and when something pisses me off, I think this time around it's it's inspired. It's definitely inspired a book that I've nearly finished. But um, yeah, I just think ask yourselves like if if there's a um, you know if your life gets ruined because an employer can't go outside of his religion when he when he they run you know um, personality checks on you or whatever character character evaluations and like oh oh he knows what art is oh he his best grades were in art class uh, are, are we still sure like uh, how we know he's not gonna um yeah uh, anyway just the questions they ask are stupid I mean I'm used to I know what it means to edit films and make music videos and you know film scenes and act roles and uh yeah uh you, you don't really um saying you believe in you, you know any suggestion you take your your 
your source for for uh, prescriptive mor moral awareness is is from some um is from the the theater. It's bullshit. Like you, you feel something in art and in, inspires you, and you leave and you think about why, and you um uh, and, uh, and then you comprehend that. But um yeah, th th this lunatic's judgment is just, it's really reinforced a concern that I, I think I had from the outset. But at church it was a case of like people being mistreated or sexually abused or harassed because of um, because of, of biblical Christianity uh, fucking someone's head up. And I didn't think I'd have any sort of comparable concern uh, of any kind in the in the private sector pharmacy world, but um, I turned out to be wrong, and that turned out to be why. Like the the owners had this enigmatic, dis quiet distance. Like, oh yeah, okay, we'll think you'll be right. We'll think you'll be right, and like you know. And plus, you're supposed to be working to be in their good books and earn their approval. But then, when that became tantam tantamount to making some sort of religious believers. Uh, acknowledgement or conversion or whatever they were trying I just went this is sick like this is absolutely sick it's beyond a fucking joke um so I am concerned about yeah like the damage that the, the danger and the risks that it poses if people are getting sized up and profiled and you might think about this in your job is, is your you know um if a boss is checking you while you're working your job and you know approving of you in one saying you know yeah okay oh we have a bit of an issue with you or oh, as soon as they start to intimate they have an issue with you like ask them to either write it on paper or tell you to your face what is the fucking issue say it and say it now and if and if it's some sort of if it turns out because you might need to find out that you're, you're not actually employed by a, a religious fucking grand poobah from the freemason club of fucking weirdos um, before things escalate and they misjudge you too much for too long um, but there'll be more on this and that's yeah that's, uh, from my take from it I'm definitely thinking more about um, enjoying my godlessness in, in, in the sense that I asserted a bit more I have wondered if um, n if like uh, naturalistic philosophies and, and irreligion and atheistic lo logical uh, epistemology is a better way to even make sense of the claims made by Christianity in the first place. So that means when I talk about them, I'm not being a Christian. Uh, hopefully that's clear enough in in the videos that are, um, are going up on, on this on this series on my YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, the positive atheists. Uh, when invited to a debate or that someone agrees to debate them or wants to debate them um, are able to argue that no gods exist and uh, Professor Victor Stanger, the particle physicist has written books like God, The Fail Hypothesis and Not By Design, The Origins of the Universe and um, he is very interesting he was sort of an e email corresponding mentor of mine for some years till he died um, well, it, he died, I think, 2014. Uh, but of all the atheists that debate who I, uh, whose, whose works I collect, uh, Professor Stengers is among the more impressive because he's actually, yeah, he's, he's, he gets involved in some very detailed debates on the, about particle physics and quantum mechanics and stuff like that. But he also says, like, we can, we can conclude that no God exists. Which is something that most atheists aren't, do, aren't taking that approach. They're taking the um, look at all these things that are wrong with religion approach, which is where they they break down the claims made by the religionists. So Professor Stenger can break down the claim, the wrong claims made by religionists, but then he can also add to it and say, well, here's my argument for why your God doesn't exist. And um, I've taken elements from both sort of subsidiaries of atheism, the negative and positive atheists, and try to combine elements from both of them uh, into my critique of the religion I was to some extent raised with.
I always had a bit of a smart ass attitude, so I was always, in the years I was made to go to church, I was even then always reserving judgment. But um, I got accused of, of, of blasphemy of some sort uh, once when I discovered a Bible contradiction. But uh, I've tried, I've, I've followed that debate out uh, in great detail since, and I had a good point discovering that Bible contradiction. That's just something churches do where they say the Bible's the Word of God. Uh, they don't know how to handle a contradiction. Well, some of them don't. Uh, at most, it proved I had a doofus for a youth pastor. But anyway, this is getting near to the 20 minute mark. Um, so I would rec seriously recommend the following uh, books. Um, Atheism, The Case Against God by George Smith. Atheism, A Philosophical Justification by Michael Martin. Uh, Not by Design, The Origin of the Universe by Victor Stenger. Uh, God, The Failed Hypothesis by Victor Stenger. Uh, and my favorite short piece, which can be found in a collected works of the Marquis de Sade, or online if you Google search for the Marquis de Sade's dialogue between a priest and a dying man uh, from 1782. And um, that's essentially a, a... The Marquis de Sade was like a playwright and a, and a fiction and a crime fiction writer. But he was... He wrote it... He started a movement called the Libertines. Um, he was quite a disturbed person. Um, but his prose is excellent. And the dialogue between the priest and the dying man is very entertaining. So I hope you check it out. Thank you. Area Nation. They, um, uh, as I learned, like, these bosses you work for for nearly well, nine years, um, and it's all about when you work in the company, they're a private company, so you got to impress the owners, but then a lot of questions, uh, were, were quite relevant. I never got to ask the face-to-face, -face, uh, to upper management, um, but their check and correct procedure while at work was always about like um I think it was quite they had questions like you know uh he listens to, to a lot of corn so is he getting his moral guidance from the singers from corn or is he a fag and he wants to suck corn's dick and Marilyn Manson's dick and there were those sorts of questions and um it made me wonder what sort of elaborate uh, so social psychoanalytic uh, linguistic framework they were operating with because A, they were getting wrong results and B, they knew I'd, I'd tussle a bit in writing with um, religious uh, s stupidity and, um, because I do think it's evil, I mean, uh, so, yeah, learning in, at the end, these, I, I wanted to say to him all throughout my career, like, your check and correct processes, I, I'd, have, I'd have learnt to drive a car by now if you weren't so concerned that I, I would watch, um, Freddy Krueger on Nightmare on Elm Street and then go and s stab people and make them float into the ceiling, you know, it's, um, to stop this uh, attri attrition, or at least tell me what <coughs> what it's about. I mean, surely they can't be saying, oh, does Luke believe in Nightmare on Elm Street? Like, I think surely they could not be that stupid. Um, but then I started to wonder, they're a private company and with private privileged information, so what's the credentials of the man that is giving me these these uh, private business checks at work. Is he a qualified social psychiatrist? Is he a psychiatrist? Um, what are his qualifications as it, as it, as it pertains to correcting uh, checking and correcting staff? 
Because it winds up that then between him and you, he might um, think he can build a case against you. Uh, um, because he's got concerns about the the entertainment that you like. Um, and so you have to ask him, why do you have that problem? And I just have no idea what his complaints could be. Like, I think it were things like, um, you listen to Marilyn Manson songs and then what, you go out and act. Like, what, like his lyrics are, are um, teaching you subliminal instructions, like, uh, like Robocop, when, when, you know, they hack Robocop in Robocop 2 and give him all those stupid extra prime directives. I felt very much like Robocop in Robocop 2 when I worked for Capital Chemist because Robocop was starting to get some of his humanity back and then the company moved in and just tr gave him an extra hundred and something protocols and he just turned into this stupid version of Robocop where like kids were spray painting on his back and um, so to learn that la that uh, the metaphysics and epistemology that uh, with the underpinnings of these these men who are correcting me and there are only two of them the co-founders of the company that they they think things like simple simplistic um, simplistic uh, bronze age -ish, uh, religious cliches like um, seeing is believing so um, yeah, like, when's that going to go out officially? Um, there's much more depth and definition to the things that you see in life than uh, someone just looking at the whole thing going on, seeing is believing. They can get, get fucked. I, I never heard him say the word unbelievable once. I did hear him say his company never makes mistakes. I did hear him say he's a scientist. And I did read books by, like you know, 20 to 30 more prominent scientists who constantly talked about the humility that comes with um, application of the principles of liberal scientific method and that no, no scientist in principle ever goes on to think that they can be completely, completely without error. In fact, if they come up with a, a theory or something like that, it's, uh, it's always open to be challenged and falsified. Uh, one scientist had his pet theory destroyed uh, and he went to the man, the scientist who destroyed his theory and he said thank you um, I'm very impressed that you have outsmarted me uh, and there's none of that attitude at all in these two guys that own Capital Chemist so the last question before I quit completely because I did not like the way I was treated by I can't say the whole company because there's no such thing as a company there are it's always people, and um, and you know uh, my uh, coolest friends like Mel, Melzy, and um, you know other people I worked with in staff. Um, still love them, and I still hope to remain good friends with them. But uh, yeah, like uh, to learn in the end these. The both of them are possibly Freemasons. Like, who wants so, so? Just because they started the company privately, they think they can run their own private checks on who is good to work for the company and who's not. And um, really, I should have said, you know, your every check, I want what you think you're checking me for, what your checking system is like, what your results of your checks are like. And I'd like them all in writing, and I wish I had said that. Um, I wish I'd said that earlier on, because yeah, you actually don't know if the if the way that the boss is profiling you at work, you don't know if that's a build up to your next promotion or to him um, trying to make a, a an illegal bind uh, profile that uh, tries to characterize you as uh, insane due to you know. A, a, a primary stimulus of his of his choosing, which has been video in my case. Thinks um. Uh, anyway, like if he did his research, he would have read my 
college art art class qualifications and he would have even known, I couldn't have made uh if I if if I was if I if my mind was that susceptible to be um dangerous in in the psycho sense because of video then I couldn't have made the assignments that I made in college I couldn't have um you know, uh, uh, th this profile is um, going. There will be there will be lawsuits in the end. When pain is really my only physically disabling pain at the moment. Is what I need need to work to recover from. But um, and this profile is an insult. And like the idea of it, it getting uh, pushed onto any of my friends or peers or friends from high school or or college or any of the friends I grew up with. They went, oh, you knew Luke. You know, you he. They are, they have their ways to try to, um, you know, pull a, pull a scam on you. So, there's things I'll be doing this year to overturn this, and I'm inspired by the friends I knew in high school who, the vast majority of them are very, uh, very cool people. I think in a way, Wani also hide to find the stereotype of, um, you know, there's jocks and nerds, and um, it's not to say no one ever got picked on, but it's also fair that, uh, I mean, I was a person who spent time with, I like sitting down and writing um, fictional short stories for, for four of the girls who are friends of mine, um, Jill and Jenny and, and Cassie and Liz. Uh, and I'd write them short stories to entertain them and then that'll be giggling on lunch break but then I also enjoyed hanging out with the so-called jocks Buy Gyps Land Dairy, Mango Passion Fruit Twist Yogurt I'm your local capital chemist oh, They don't want to hear what I got to say there because y'all need to here's, suffer Here's Claire on how everyone needs to suffer It's true Y'all need to go the fuck without Y'all need to suffer you all need to fucking starve a little bit and feel a bit uncomfortable and, 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 and go without. And fucking suffer. So you're a minimalist of sorts. No, I'm not a minimalist. I'm an existentialist. It's more the fact that... In Do you like Sartre being in nothingness? <laughs> no, sweetie, because nihilism is just the end result of giving up to the uh, grand overall. But he was, he's an existential atheist. He wasn't a nihilist. You ever read the shit? <laughs> okay, he wasn't exactly Nietzsche. But then... He's, not, he's nothing... Nietzsche there's no exactly real nothing Nietzsche. matters um, arch archetype in Sartre's writings. Oh, dear Lord. Um, yeah, have a cherry ripe and shut up. <laughs> No, I'm not in the mood at the moment. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm Claire's not. not in the mood, so there'll be more on later, deterioration. I will, I will later. inform everybody why it is that they need... I'm here with my friend Fernando. He does not go uh, to church like me. Why you leave church, Fernando? Uh, hello. <laughs> Who's the name? Can you say why you, left, why you leave church? Oh, there's a very close. Very close. Very close. No, yeah. why you leave the church? No church. No church. No why church. you go? Oh, I don't know where. You know like? No like. Don't believe? No believe. This the church, this girl? <laughs> is like just church or not? I'm asking you um, why you, we don't like church. No, I'm not. What like do you, church. what do you like what makes you angry about the church? They piss you off? Jesus. I don't like Jesus. You don't like Jesus in the sky? In the sky, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Fernando has left the church. He does not think anymore that Jesus is in the sky. I repeat, he does not think Jesus is in the sky. Anything else, Fernando? You like the Bible? No. Oh, no. <laughs> That'll have to do. Now he's showing his true self, his true colors. Yeah, it's nice color. Apparently this is deterioration. Webisode 6. Episode 6. 
we're talking more about the end of uh, Christian monotheism singular. He means the death of God. The death of God. We're, we're killing God, y'all. That's all you need to know. You don't get much better than that for a catch line. Killing God. Okay.
I don't know what you're interviewing me about, I'm rambling about... Can you say watch, watch Luke Banton on YouTube? Watch Luke Banton on YouTube. Thanks, Max. Yeah, you're welcome. Alright. Yeah. Jij had een normaal leven daarvoor ja. en toen plots kom je uit narcose en dan merk je dat het leven niet meer hetzelfde zal zijn. Hoe reageer je daar dan op? Ja, uh, eerst een deel van ongeloof. Ongeloof is eigenlijk het juiste woord. Excuse me. Ongeloof is eigenlijk het juiste woord wat lijken hier hanteert. Dat, dat was bij mij dus ook mijn, mijn eerste gewaarwording. Dat ik dacht, dat, dat kan niet. Dat, uh, dat me... Dat... Excuseer. Excuseer. Excuseer, dames en heren. Dus, uh, je probeert dan terug uh, je troek op te stellen. Ik begrijp echt niet sorry, wat ik, er hier aan het gebeuren is. Excuseer. Ik wil even, sorry. Echt, echt, sorry. Excuseer, dames en heren. Dat betekent ook dat je bijvoorbeeld uh, ja, seksualiteit uh, ook een... Uh, groot probleem bijvoorbeeld wordt. Ja, mijn vriend heeft het gewoon uh, gedaan gemaakt en ik neem hem daar ook niet aan. Mm-hmm. Plus het feit als je, als, je met, als, als je met seks omgaat, is het, is het niet alleen het fysieke dat telt, maar ook soms de, de lieve woordjes. Die... Uh, good evening. Um, so, uh, on my list of reading, I have a very extensive, um, uh, to-do list, um, pertaining to books and there's really more to get through than, uh, I have time for plus, plus is the, um, the book that I'm, I'm working to write, um, which is actually drawing a lot of its cross genre. So um, it's the first, not only is it the first book I've written, will have written, but it's it's a cross genre book. So uh, if you wanted a source or an inspiration that um, years, many years ago, in fact, before my 20s, that was while I was at CIT, uh, there was this pretty girl, Anna, and she was a fellow student um, and I had been at, on a, an emailing list called um, Avoid L and it was an emailing list for uh, designed initially for the network of students of Professor Victor Stenger who uh, died in 2014 uh, very sad about his loss because I'd been following a lot of his online debates over the years but he was um, emeritus professor of particle physics um, at the University of Hawaii and adjuncts, ad, adjunct professor of philosophy at the University of Colorado. Uh, and he was a, a brilliant mind because he, um, he was constantly showing that he was cross-connotative of, um, uh, cross-connotative of, of, of all these concepts in um, in quantum uh, mechanics as well as philosophy. So um, also as far as his debates go for atheism, um, he I saw him as advancing the frontier of the strength and veracity of, of arguments that people could make, that atheists could make against or for the non-existence of the Christian God and the God of um, monotheism, the three main of which in our world this, this day is uh, uh, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Now, um, I'd, I'd read a series of interviews between him and my first atheist mentor, uh, Mr. Cliff Walker, and another man who, friend who sadly has passed away. Uh, at one point he was talking about involving me in some web page uh, preservation project work to help store his life's work. He's a dis- disabled man. Um, 
and but he he was brilliant when it came to um if you were to send him hate mail essentially if religious people were doing this all the time sending him um emails about you know why he's offending god and jesus christ and why he should convert again and you know uh why is um reason any better than faith and you know all all, all these sorts of topics um so through him I heard of Professor Stenger and then uh, Professor Stenger, I'd sent him an, a, a request essentially saying, can I be a part of your mailing list? So the, it's the dispatch of emails that are originally designed for his, his students at, um, at those universities. I, th I think primarily it was the Hawaii University. I uh, obviously told him that I didn't have the money and I wasn't, and I wasn't an enrolled student. I said I'm, I'm from Australia, actually, and um, but he allowed me to be on this list, which is where you just get throughout the week you get emails that he's prepared for his students on various topics. He's actually got books out called like uh, God the Failed Hypothesis, um, and so in atheism, there's there's typically two branches: uh, negative atheism which is the mere abstinence from belief in a god. It's, if the position could be described in a statement, it would be, I lack god belief. Um, whereas Christians, one way Christians like to misrepresent uh, atheists is to say, well, you must hate god or you must um, believe no god exists or... Um, you know, or, or, or you believe in the devil, or, you know, it's always, um, yeah, they don't, they don't really get the epistemology of it. Um, so, but all negative atheism means is uh, to be without belief in a God. Uh, then there's positive atheism, which is, a positive atheist is still a negative atheist as well. It's just an additional advance. Uh, except you don't have to take e-meter tests at the Church of Scientology or, <laughs> or anything like that. Um, uh, positive atheism is still atheism. It's just an atheist who's prepared to sit with other people and talk to them and say, look, you believe, you want me to believe, I don't believe, and here's why I don't think your God exists. And then uh, out come the positive atheists' arguments. And many of them are quite popular, popularly known in debate circles. There's the um, argument from evil and suffering, which looks into... Uh, there's the argument from divine attributes and their incoherence, which is, talks about how uh, a god cannot be all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-loving at the same time without absurd contradictions bearing out in this world that would just be impossible. Um... So these positive arguments are designed to establish a firm case that not only do the... The negative atheist knows how to show why um, a believer's arguments don't work. So, you know, um, the believer makes the argument first and the, the, the atheist just says, well, that argument doesn't work for reasons yada yada yada. Uh, and they just essentially challenge and falsify the arguments that the the believer has brought forth first. But it's it's custom for. Uh, I mean, if it was me, I would say, well, I'm aware of positive atheist arguments. Are you? Would you be offended if I was to argue, or are you prepared to listen to me if I attempt to argue that your God doesn't exist? And it's the sort of thing. I, I only debate if, um, in principle, it's permitted. I don't think atheists. We aren't really interested in um I mean we're not even really a group uh the the absence or the lack of theism as I learned well from a man named George H Smith is that um you know the scope of atheism is that we it's really it's tricky to say that we can be classed as a group because all that one atheist needs to have in common with another atheist by the definition of um, our theism without theism is that both both those people are without a belief in God. So beyond that, um, there's no other, like, an atheist can't come up to me and say, oh, you've, uh, 
you haven't kept this commandment <laughs> or you know um you haven't done the crossing of the desert in the unblinking eye so you should wear the stone of shame um like that simpsons episode about the the stone cutters there's no real there's nothing like that and a, a, the, a, the atheist movement if it's going to be called that is isn't even a it's a bunch of individuals that only the only thing they have in common is that they're human and that they lack lack theism uh, every one of us started out as a negative atheist. We had to be taught what theism was uh, before we could become theists. So atheists lack that belief. They've assessed just, they've assessed what it's about, and they've chosen to abstain. Um, so, in, uh, I, as far as ideology goes, it really outdoes the Christian at church saying, um, "I'm going to abstain from from sex till I'm married." Uh, only after I'm married will I imagine the 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 God who um, sacrificed virgins and babies and um, commanded all these wars and killed his son. Uh, only after I'm married will I imagine him watching over me while I have sex in bed. Uh, and that's um, something that, yeah, uh, anyway... Uh, religion, uh, atheism is a religion, uh, just like abstinence is a sex position. This is um, one of the jokes going around to try to make the point out about what atheism means. And um, atheism is a religion, just like off is a TV channel. Um, and my, what I say is more or less, um, it's similar to what the Church of Satan say. They're not interested in. Um, People who they're only interested in recruiting people. They already they only want people who are already with them, and um, that's exactly how it was for me. At no point were any of these atheist mentors trying to say, um, you know, uh, you, you you they didn't just blankly approach me, going, "Well, you're in a Christian cult. I'll teach you the ways of the atheist." I, I had to seek each of them out and. I had to ask them questions, um, and you know they freely admitted that all they were giving me was their um, opinions. Uh, well, I mean, I found they wrote very eloquently, uh, very well thought out. Um, so you know, one atheist is never responsible for the actions, I guess, because uh, independence and self-responsibility is so emphasized when atheism is talked about um, you don't really blame one unbeliever for the choices and behaviors of another unbeliever um, were that ever claimed even those two unbelievers the two concerned unbelievers would get together going like what the fuck <laughs> like what were you on about uh, with all that you know we agreed about thinking for ourselves and we agreed about taking responsibility for ourselves um, and we agreed we don't have a God belief. So it means there's a lot of working things through that you have to do for yourself. Um, and there's no, like, you know, you, you're not an atheist yet, but you will be one day if you if you square up to um, um, Alain de Botton or, you know, you're free to disagree with. It's it's a bit like how they enjoy it in um, science student debates where they say, you know, here's my hypothesis and theory. Can you try to, to uh, falsify it? You know, if an atheist can say something to me that I hadn't considered before, uh, you're always open to think about what that is and you're always open to whether it... Um, Uh, concludes you to to re-examine some of your ideas and change them if need be. Um, so, yeah, um, that's that's the gist of of the definition and and scope of atheism. Um, but yeah, so I was at CIT uh, and we were studying chemistry 
and doing experiments. There's a talk about the experiment I did because it was one I felt I learned a lot from uh, in principle uh, and in RSPCA. If you want to extend the RSPCA's creed to uh, microbes and single-celled organisms, then um, uh, it certainly uh, would apply to my experiment in, a, in the CIT Bruce lab one day with... Um, with a microscope and the amoeba we were studying it was, no it wasn't amoeba, it was uh, paramecium, sorry we were studying paramecium uh, but there was this pretty blonde girl named Anna and I remember her looking me in the eye one day and she asked me um, Luke, do you think our thoughts are atoms? and she had gone cross-eyed in one eye as she asked me so I thought it was very cute um, uh, and she had an interest in borrowing one of Professor Stenger's books from me called um, uh, Physics and Psychics. And she offered me uh, her book, Sophie's World, which was a novel. Um, it's called, an, it's subheading, it's by Justine Garter, and its subheading is um, a novel about the history of philosophy. Uh, so by this time, I think, uh, I mean, I had ordered some some books for myself, but most of the references, if not all of them, that I was getting, I was getting from either basic Googling or the Positive Atheism website with Mr. Walker, uh, who was who was sort of mentoring me um, as I was, as I'd exited the church, and I wanted to build build on my knowledge of philosophy. So, um. So I was lent this this novella, Sophie's World, <clears throat> um, and it tells the story of this girl, Sophie, who's receiving letters from a relative, uh, talking about um, different key philosophers throughout different times throughout the last two millennia, starting with ancient Greeks, uh, right through to modern existentialists. But um, she's getting these postcards from a strange um oh they're, they're written in a strange way like they're each a surprise to her and they're just brief summaries each each postcard uh summaries of the, the core ideas and arguments of a particularly uh, noted uh philosopher in history and what ideas that he or she contributed to the to philosophy as a whole um, the book has an interesting twist to it. If you enjoy a good read, I'd recommend it to you. I won't spoil the ending for you. Um, and, uh, yeah, so in that sense, I've taken inspiration from... If I can design a fictional twist, if I can, like, hybrid um, philosophy and fiction myself... Uh, but I want to try and do it in a in a in a really you might say in dark. For me, the dark dark uh, when it's called a theme, I, I don't like the stereotypical uh, emo. Um, I don't like I don't I'm not really down. It's I mean art is art artists are free to do what they have to do as far as their own passions go concerning artistic expression and their right to do that, but. Um, it's just not my thing, the, like, the white stripes, and, uh, but I do like dark themes, and, um, I've always been an appreciator of dark artistry, um, Stephen King growing up, um, the Nightmare on Elm Street series, um, so... Uh, yeah, um, Stephen King books and shows like uh, 11, 2263 and the movie It, the, the original It with Tim Curry and uh, Kingdom Hospital and um, so I w would aim, and in fashion, uh, always like um, black black clothes and um, some very attractive women that are very good at um, black clothing, and uh, and I enjoy wearing black myself. So uh, I don't see it to be about a particular mood 
or um or anything nihilism i was just talking earlier today about nihilism being a, a whole nothing matters standpoint um but i was actually quite touched by well i thought it to be quite moving uh this short short 40 page piece by peter stodged named uh, neo nihilism that goes quite a bit into david hume's groundwork on arguments for, for moral understanding and the difference between prescriptive and descriptive morals um so what i think people miss perhaps when they get uh when they try to you know crack a case on on nihilism in uh, a priori is that uh it's not people's decisions to want to reach a point where they lo they're looking at themselves in life and and want they feel like saying everything's meaningless if the if the Christian writer having it having at them for that they should read their own uh, book of Ecclesiastes where you know it says everything is meaningless says the teacher utterly utterly meaningless says the teacher you know nihilism um, that aspect of nihilism is nothing new and something compared to it can be found in the Bible anyway so um, but the point is in what context are they saying uh, that, that everything's meaningless and um, because nihilists talk about the difference between the morals that you live by and would teach someone else about and the morals you observe in the system around you and how other people treat you or judge you. So moral nuances and di moral diversity is recognized by nihilism. It's just, uh, it's just, I think, I think it's that, uh, it's a, it's a progress from Schopenhauer. Schopenhauer wrote The World as Will and Idea, which is a philosophy book that influenced the um, film design and the script writing for the Matrix trilogy. Um, uh, and I'm not sure if they're intentional metaphor. Like Schopenhauer's World as Will and Idea is that we're beings of will. And everything else around us is, is comprised of ideas. Um... And it's meaningless too in Schopenhauer's writing. He has this strong pessimism. Pessimism that, uh, though he was a, an inspiration and a mentor to Nietzsche, Nietzsche was unable to be as pessimistic as Schopenhauer was, or is said to have been. Schopenhauer, you know, often occasioning the, the conclusion that it had been better off it had we not been born. Uh, Nietzsche couldn't stand for that, but now the neo nihilists are even happier than Nietzsche was for a time there. So uh, I intend to bring together concepts from my reality as it's been handed to me, uh, well, underhanded to me, <laughs> and fiction and philosophy together, and try and mix those those themes together into this book. Uh, but anyway, that's my. That's my log. Log for the day. Good night, everyone.